Of course, um, everybody is watching the situation in Russia very closely. More recently, the DA has accused Ramaphosa of reneging on GNU agreements. That's because the party has distanced itself from Ramaphosa's comments on Russia being an ally to South Africa uh, during a previous address, an address yesterday at that BRICS summit. The DA says the president needs to stick to what was agreed upon regarding foreign policy when the GNU was formed. Let's make sense of the back and forth, if you like, bring in political analysts. Is Professor Lisiba Defu, who joins us now via our video link. Prof, it's been a while. Thank you for your time and your patience. Always great to see you um, as we make sense of some of what is said and perhaps some of what is not said. I think very few people are surprised that this has now taken place. The question, I suppose, becomes do the political parties, or more specifically, the politicians who form part of this government, do they have the requisite maturity to be able to navigate through these expected differences? Oh, yes, no doubt. They have the requisite maturity, but they're just playing politics. And um, <clears throat> what, what the people of South Africa did uh, on the 29th of, um, of, a, of May was to make an unequivocal statement that said, it shall take some time that either of you can rule this country or govern this country alone. And I dare say, I don't see in the next 15 to 20 years, one single party governing this party. So let's just, they must just make peace with the fact that they will have to work together, never mind the inconveniences of any marriage or any setup. The GA needs the ANC, the ANC needs the GA. There might be other parties that we can bring on board. But these two, for now, uh, have the necessary numerical strength and the experience in governance. And therefore, they, the sooner they agree that uh, they will differ, they must manage their differences, but it must always be in the interest of the people of South Africa, who told them in one clear terms that neither of you has the sole minded to govern. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because the spokesperson of the ANC has already been quoted as saying that the DA mustn't think that they have veto powers within the GNU. And so I suppose the question becomes whether or not uh, these parties are managing this codependence that you speak of well, even though, to be fair, we are still at this very early stage of this alliance. Well, it's, it's fairly early. But you know what surprises me? Is the excitement around the statement by, made by John, by, by St. John, uh, Minister Steinhazen, right? Because the, for me, there's nothing surprising there. Mm. I expected that. Remember, in the history that I'm familiar with, they've never ever taken a posture that se seemed and wanted to embrace uh, Russia, right? And in the main, the East. And they, they take their cue from the West, in the main, from America. And if you push it further, I would say, had it not been for the East, maybe you and I wouldn't be speaking this language. Maybe some of us would still be in the bush trying to fight for the liberation of this country. So as Mandela said, prescribe not for me who my friends should be. During the war, you were not for, with me. Now, we, during peace, you want to dictate to me who my friends should be. The DA has its own foreign policy, more inclined to the West, South Africa non-aligned, but the material conditions today dictate that it should be inclined to those who helped her in her hour of need. And that I find understandable, reasonable, and comprehensible. You say we shouldn't be surprised, and I agree with you. Uh, and I'm going to add by saying this is probably going to be the first of many other disagreements over the next five years, at least if this particular arrangement survives that long. But I do also think um, we shouldn't play down the importance of coherence in government messaging, which was always the concern, for lack of a better term, when this GNU was put together, given just how diametrically opposed it seems, more specifically the ANC and DAR, on these issues. And, um, you know, I have no doubt, for example, that if this isn't spoken about, it could get to a point where it does cause a lot of confusion if on the one hand the president makes a, a certain proclamation and on the other a minister serving in his cabinet pulls in the opposite direction. 
Either way it goes, it is bound to happen that way. These are early days. We'll falter and rise. We'll learn as we go forward. But both parties know they need each other. Sometimes you and I overplay the little things that seem to be differences. We overblow them. Mm. <clears throat> I have no doubt that wherever they are, they understand. And uh, they are more at peace than you and I, which seem to make something big out of an end mode. But the, the messaging is something else. They will always differ. But I, I have a sense they, they appreciate the greater goal, the ultimate goal, serving the best, the people of South Africa to the best of their ability. The ANC was given a chance. It did its best until the decline was irreversible. The DA, wherever it governs, no doubt it governs fairly well, comparatively speaking, there are a lot of re re reports. So you have these two parties. If they could just blend and be mature enough and say it is about the other and not about the self or their political parties. You know, I always quote Martin Luther King, unless black and white recognize and accept they must live and work together, they will perish together as fools. The DA needs the ANC, the ANC needs the DA, and South Africa can benefit more if the two work together. That's interesting. All right, if we accept what you say, then perhaps you can then take us into the mind of the DA, and more specifically, John Stenazen, uh, to whom these remarks are being attributed. Why make a statement like that then to begin with, if both parties appreciate that, frankly, this codependency is what is necessary for both their survivals. Why go there to begin with? I mean, is it just to bait the media and every other fool in the country? Look, he has his own constituency. He has his own identity. He has to protect and to preserve and project it to his electorate, right? But at the same time, he must know there is a limit to that because if you push it too hard, it might be detrimental to the very view that I think he shares, that this government of national unity must work. I have no doubt that he wants it to work. And I, I'm one of those who believe it is going to live up to the last day of his term. Five, five years, it will go through that with all the ups and downs and challenges. And um, uh, those who occasionally go to church, I will invoke them that they must also not forget to pray for it to work rather than to work against it. Like I know that there are other parties who are praying day and night and speaking the language that seems to suggest if it were to collapse yesterday, they would celebrate. Of course, uh, the members of the JNU, uh, you know, it's not lost to them that they need a way to be able to deal with these differences. In fact, some kind of mechanism is being announced today um, in Tien Hayes and Parliament is going to be led by the Deputy President, Paul Mashatile. Um, we don't know what, you know, the dynamics are in there. I suppose the word I'm looking for is the details of how this mechanism is going to work. But in your mind, I mean, how should the structure be put together if, in fact, those who want this GNU to work are to have it their way? They take too long to act on this. Why should it really take six, six months? Remember, um, Deputy President Mashatile has been at this for quite some time, and I commend him for that. But should it take that long that it even begin to militate? against the good intentions and the vision they have had when they put the government of national unity together. We talk too much and act less. Surely, if you just get a few technocrats, sit down there and work on it. I'm one of those who advocated for an, a, a national dialogue, and I'm no longer sure if I still support that idea. But we take too long to act and to implement. I mean, really to come up with a document, a 10-pager, that says this is a dispute resolu resolution mechanism decided upon by the parties that are there and also invoking some experts, if needs be, from outside to help us do that. And I would be happy if we were to go to the West, right? They have had, Germany has had, how, for how many times, right? Um, Italy, how many times? Britain, how they, many countries in Europe have lived under government of national unity. Can't we take a cue from them? as instead of trying to reinvent the, the wheel, it is doable. 
It can be done. I surely, in less than a month, they could have done this. Put up the structure, get the express from within and outside, because the politicians alone are always self-serving. They are always about power. We may not go too far. I'm interested in the remark you made about you no longer supporting a national dialogue or the idea of one. Tell us why. Yeah, look, I, I wrote a piece some time back in the Citizen da, 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 and so on. I debated this, right? But when I begin to look at what ought to go into it, I say to myself, but we're going to end up with another piece of paper like the National Development Plan. I was. I asked myself. I interrogated myself. What is it that we are going to come up with at that conference that is not enshrined in the national development plan? How many plans do we have that are gathering dust that could help us go forward? We don't know. We no longer need policy documents. We have enough of those. Let's just implement them, or get two people, or ten people, just to glean from those documents, including the national development plan. What is it that we can implement in the next five years or in the next four years because we are already losing the first year of the government of national unity? A five pager that says this is how we are going to go about it. Sure. Yeah. Already. Otherwise, you're going to end up with a, a glossy document you call a plan and then you are not going to implement it. Yeah. South Africa being accused many instances of suffering from analysis paralysis and not getting around to finally doing the work. Professor Lisi Badefu, always a pleasure. Thank you very much indeed for speaking to us. We appreciate your time and your insights. Professor Defu speaking to us there in this capacity as a political analyst.